Hello and welcome to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. I hope you're having a good day and we are because it's nice and warm today. Makes a nice change. Yesterday it was 13 degrees and today it's 21. Proper weird. Anyway, we can't grumble and I've got a new apron on. A Stan's No Tubes apron. I've been wanting one of these for ages. Leather strap and everything. Bob on. Um, anyway, enough of that. Um, so this one is Bleeding Magura MT Brakes, okay? Now you'll enjoy this one because it's completely different to kind of most other brake bleeds that we've done so far. Um, and we're going to put it in the in the brake bleed series. We've done Shimano, we've done Hope, and I think we've done SRAM. Uh, so today we'll do Magura. Now, customers have said to me, do you think this is an easy process? And I personally don't think it is. Um, and that's simply because um, the bleed port screws uh, are open once you've actually opened them. They're, they're, they're actually screwed directly into the caliper. Uh, and once you undo those, all the fluid starts to run out, unless you do it in a certain way. So, let's crack on. So let's take a look at this caliper. It's part of the MT range. Um, it's a, quite a powerful caliper, to be honest. It's quite a powerful brake. This one's on a, a Cube 160 e-bike uh, and it's uh, got plenty of stopping power. This particular one has four separate pads but you might come across them as having a pair of pads with a V in the middle. You can either fit, you can fit either sort of pad in these. You can put four separate ones or two pair or a pair. Uh, some people prefer four separate ones. They feel, they feel that they can actually get a better feel and a better bite. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to take these pads out. So let's get these pads out. Um, it's a Torx 25. Okay. Just need to undo these. Don't lose the pins. Okay. Fairly straightforward so far. Okay. Put these pins to one side. Now these pistons in here, there's four of them, these pistons are actually magnetic so you can feel it actually grabs hold of the pad as well so, that, as well so they don't drop through. So we'll take them out, pull them out from top and you can see them there. These are in particularly good condition so we're not going to actually change these. The front one's a little bit, uh, a little bit worn but on, on the whole they're actually the same on either side. So we'll be able to reuse them. They're nice and clean, nice and dry. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do uh, after we've taken the pads out is to push these pistons back into the housing. And we can do this. This, this gap is a little bit too small to get us piston retraction tool in there. But we can actually use uh, a ball-ended uh, hex key. This one's a 5mm. And if we're very careful from the top, and put the hex key in the middle of the piston, we can actually gently persuade that to go in. You usually find that Magura pistons usually go in quite easily unless they've been overfilled with fluid before, okay? So all them pistons are now back in the housing, all back flush, which is exactly where we want them. Now let's have a look at the stuff that we need to use to bleed these. So here we've got as usual bits and bobs that we need to use to bleed these brakes. We've got as very common syringes, we've got as pricker tool, we've got two Magura uh, brake, brake bleed adapters. It's important that you use those, otherwise you'll end up with fluid all over the place. Two pieces of uh, silicon hose, a T25 and important uh, Magura's own royal blood uh, bleeding mineral oil. Okay, got to use that stuff. Um, so people have said, why do, why do I constantly use new syringes every time I bleed? It's because I don't like cross-contamination between mineral oil, dot 4 fluid and Shimano oil. I like to keep them all clean. They're super cheap, they're, di they're disposable, and if I don't, I end up with tons and tons of um, syringes all over the place. Um, so let's get back to the brake and we'll look at the front first. So now that we're at the lever end, what we need to do is we need to lift this lever up and make it fairly horizontal, reasonable anyway. You don't need to make it too horizontal, it just needs to be there and thereabouts, okay? This is actual the bleed part here that you can see 
there. It's a plastic screw, okay, it's T25, and you need to be careful. It's not meant to be over tightened. You could actually tighten it like that, and that'll be fine. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna not gonna flow out or anything. Um, this is composite plastic. Uh, it's a very strong lever. Um, so you just need to be careful with this particular bleed port. So now that we've actually got that uh, level, what we need to do is we need to get a syringe on it. So let's take this bleed port off. I'll get a cloth just to catch any that might come out. Okay. Okay, and we'll just put that to one side. Keep that safe. Okay, so that exposes as uh, as lever end. So if we get as syringes, put us tubing on the end. Slide a bit of tubing over there. Put us adapters on or one of them at least. Okay, and we'll just draw some fluid up. Some royal blood. I don't know why they call it royal blood, but they do. Anyway, so, so we've got some royal blood in a syringe, okay? And I'm just gonna wind it on there with my fingers, just so it stops. It's got a little rubber ring on the end, so it should make its own seal if we just hand tight, okay? That's all we need to do at that point, okay? So you can see there's air in the tube. It doesn't really matter at this point because what we'll do is we'll push it up from the back. So we'll take a second syringe, put a tube on it, put an adapter on, okay? And we'll draw some fluid up into this one. Again, not a lot, 10 mils fine. 10 or 15 mil, okay, and we'll move down to the back. So this is the one that you actually need to be a little bit careful because there's no lock off mechanism on this bleed port here. And I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> you need some cloth. So if we slightly undo this bleed port here with this T25, and we take that out, and we're going to get a slight little bit of loss of fluid. Okay, now it's only slight, but that's enough to actually let air into the system. And once you've got air in that system, you're defeating the object of what, defeating the object of what you're trying to do. So <clears throat> let's plonk that back in for now, okay? And we'll get a syringe on. <clears throat> take it, take his bleed port off again. Put that to one side. Don't lose that. You can screw his bleed adapter on there. And again, we just need to be hand tight because it's got a rubber seal on the end. Don't need to be really, really tight. Okay, so now. <clears throat> Now we've got an open system, okay? So what we need to do is, if I move my camera around so you can see the front and the back. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, this procedure is very similar to most other brake bleeding procedures. And that is we need to take this syringe, hold it up with his hand, and take the, the one at the far end on the lever. You can probably, if I put that in focus there, you can probably see that now. I'm holding that with my left hand. Okay, and I'm going to push and pull with uh, the syringes, sending fluid from the back to the front. Okay, and I'm doing it very slowly. I'll focus on the back. Okay, and I can see that there's some air come out of the top okay into the syringe and I'm going to push it back the other way okay I'm 
Okay, I'm just going to tighten this bleed, bleed screw up because it's just a little bit loose. It's just not tight enough. We've just got a little bit of fluid leak underneath, okay? So I'm pushing it back from the top to the bottom. Okay. There's quite a bit of air coming out of there. Being careful not to actually push it all the way through. Still a little bit of a leak on there. That's it. Need to be careful not to over tighten that bleeds that bleed screw there, that adapter. Okay. So again I'm going to push it back from the lever at the top. Back to the syringe at the bottom. Just put a little bit of cloth on the floor because there's a little bit of there's a little bit of fluid there. It's mineral oil, it's not corrosive. Okay. So now that we've actually got all the air out of the system from back to front, what we need to do is we need to get this bleed port screw back in this caliper. Okay. Now the best way of doing this is to take the caliper off the bike, lift it up so it's higher than the bar, and then we can turn it on its side and then make sure that when we take this bleed pot out that we don't actually let any fluid out. Okay, so let's turn it on its side. I'll lift it up slightly. So it's higher than the, it's higher than the front. Okay, and we'll just loosen this caliper off. Just turn the camera up. Okay, so I'm just going to take this caliper just off the bike so I can turn it on its side. So we'll leave that like that for now. Take the adapter out from underneath, otherwise we'll, it'll fall off. And I'm going to get a clean cloth. Okay, so we've got a bleed screw. Okay which is there um, and what we need to do now is like I said before we need to turn this on its side okay and then we need to undo this bleed adapter so <clears throat> let's put that uh, cloth underneath okay I've got my little bleed screw ready with my T25 and I'm going to undo that very very carefully so I don't lose any fluid okay and I'm also going to drop some fluid into the top just a little bit just a little drop so it actually fills the top so doing it that way means that I've no air at all in that system particularly the caliper okay and I'm going to screw that back up just like that okay just give that a bit of a wipe I'll give it a wash afterwards before I put uh, the pads back in okay now we aren't we aren't actually forced the fluid through too hard so the pistons have stayed exactly where they are we didn't really need any any piston blocks in there uh, because we won't put really pushing hard enough um, so we've got no air in that caliper at all now so what we need to do is we need to just bob that back on keep it in its place don't need to be exactly spot on tight just not swinging about and now <clears throat> let's move up to the uh, to the other end so what we need to do now is we need to actually transfer this bike so the actual lever is higher than the caliper. So I'll lift it up slightly and I'll swivel it round. Okay, that's it. 
So now this particular lever is a lot higher than the caliper. Okay, we've got as uh, as fluid a syringe on top. Okay, and what we need to do is we need to just need to force a little bit of fluid down into the into the lever, just so when we take this off, there's just going to be no air at the top. Just get my spanner. And if we're careful enough, that should brim on the top, which it does. Okay, so put that back. Just wipe that top off just slightly, okay? And that fluid is just brimming on the top there. So I'll take my, take my bleed screw and just bob it back in there. Don't matter if a little bit of fluid comes out the top. Okay, again we can clean this and just wash it off later. Okay, let's give this caliper a really good clean and we'll go back down to the bottom end. So let's put us pads back in. Okay, we can drop them in from the top. Okay. And don't forget the magnetic, so they'll stay where we set where we put them. We'll just bob those pins in loose for now, okay? Just to stop them moving around. Okay, let's bob his wheel back in. And we'll just loosen this caliper off slightly so it will centralise itself. Okay, and we'll look down from the top. And we can just tighten that up where it's central on the caliper. On both ends. We don't need to tighten it up fully at this point. Okay, right. So, and then what we need to do is we need to press as lever. Okay, and the pads will come out on their own and they'll get to a point where they'll start to bite, which is there. Okay, now we can use this pricking tool to make sure that each particular piston is coming out at the same time. Okay. And that is rock hard, which is exactly what we want. So that's where his bite point is there, which is exactly where we want it. Job done. So as you can see, it is reasonably straightforward, but what you've got to be wary of is letting air get back into the system through the bleed port screw because there's no lock off uh, and as soon as you undo uh, that bleed screw at the back as soon as you start to lose fluid you will lose all your pressure uh, and all the time that you've spent trying to get air out will get back in and that way it's important that lift the back caliper up higher than the uh, than the front lever turn the caliper on its side and then just top it up so there's no air in there at all and then put the bleed screw back in and that's the way to do it um, and doing it that way and then centralizing your pistons and your and your pads uh, you'll get a really really good bite so I hope you found that useful so the front one is a little bit more difficult than the rear you need to really remove the brake uh, from the front to actually do it properly uh, because the caliper it's very difficult to get the caliper higher than the lever with it being the front uh, so it's probably better to take that off your bike and do it that way um, and then you, you're not actually going to lose any fluid when you undo that bleed part uh, on your caliper so I hope you enjoyed that any questions or comments please leave them in the bottom thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it 
please subscribe. Thank you very much. Turtle Pip.